What's up guys, your boy Benny. What's the most important decision you will ever make in your life? A wise person will probably say who you marry. That relationship is going to determine so much about your profession, where you live, your family life, how many kids you're gonna have, if you're gonna be addicted to pills or not. Actually, it's a really important, it's the foundation for everything else. That relationship is the cornerstone of so many other good or bad things that will happen in your life. And a lot of people are probably nodding right now in the comment section saying, yeah, man, I feel that. And I feel that every single day as a married man with three kids. And so relationships, especially partnerships uh, that are public, uh, that people know about, that really provide opportunities for you are very, very valuable. And nobody knows that more than Donald Trump. Donald Trump knows that the wrong partnerships in business or in politics can really lead to calamitous results. Look no further than Mike Pence in January 6th, or look no further than Mike Pence as he runs against Donald Trump and tried to uh, effectively, you know, be the suicide cruise missile flying in to the side of his campaign. Mike Pence ran hard against Donald Trump and called him a traitor effectively. Like, what world do we live in? This is the guy's vice president. And so this decision is so important and even more important because Donald Trump will have one term, constitutionally limited to a single term. That means that if Donald Trump wants to get anything done, any lasting, and as we have seen with Joe Biden, executive orders, boom, you can just get rid of so many other things. Joe Biden can flip the country overnight. The policies of the nation can be utterly eroded overnight if it's just executive orders. You have to have a sustainable movement that carries forward. You have to have real change. And that's gonna mean generationally, you need somebody to carry the torch. Somebody who's younger, somebody who believes in his, their heart of hearts in MAGA, and somebody who is going to be a true ally of Donald Trump in the vice presidency position. We go on and on about it, but it's so unbelievably important. This pick is so important. And if recent headlines are to be believed, Donald Trump is doing open auditions right now for his vice presidency, and there are a lot of names in that hat. So Donald Trump is doing The Apprentice in real time, right? A lot of people are saying Sarah Sanders, Elise Stefanik, Marco Rubio, J.D. Vance. There are so many names out there floating around. People are saying Ron DeSantis. <laughs> I don't see it, but whatever. Nikki Haley, please God, no. But there's one name that keeps popping up and floating up to the top. I'm doing my best to do, uh, like, to 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 come at this issue and set aside the fact that we've done work with Vivek, right? Like we've gone on the campaign trail and he's come on the program and stuff and we, we know him and I actually really like the guy. Um, I'm doing my best to like look at this from a strategic level, but there was a big piece of information that dropped during a recent interview with Vivek that really had us uh, saying, holy smokes, does Vivek know that he's the pick? Here, we'll play you that clip in just a moment. U.S. presidential election, Vivek Ranswamy for vice president. Donald Trump says he will be working with us for a long time. That's what Donald Trump said at an event where the crowd chanted VP, VP, VP at Vivek. You can hear this. Do you hear it? There you go. So that Thank is you. mixed. Thank you. That wow, is mixed. That's, how was that? Pretty good, right? That was pretty good. And he's a fantastic guy. And he's really, uh, he's got something that's uh, very special because he started off with a Zippo and he's got, he ended up very strong. He did a great job. I was actually surprised when he called because he was doing well. And uh, it's an honor to have his endorsement. He's going to be working with us and he'll be working with us for a long time. He'll Thank be working you. with us for a long time. Mix that with the recent polls that show that Vivek is the top vice presidential contender. Tim Scott and Tucker Carlson in second place. Man, Vice President Tucker Carlson would be so based. Our audience was polled about this, and this is what the results were. This shocked me. I pride myself in knowing my audience very, very well and knowing this audience very, very well. This actually shocked me. I thought it'd be more even. I thought it'd be 50% Tucker, 50% Vivek, but... Vivek winning by a landslide in the Veep stakes when it came to our audience live during the New Hampshire primaries. But there is a very interesting clip that just popped 
from last night on Fox News with Vivek uh, talking to Laura Ingram about the potential of being VP and what role he's going to have in the Trump campaign moving forward. A shocking, a shocking uh, bit of news here, and we pay attention to this kind of stuff, is Vivek saying he can't wait for the debates with Kamala Harris? What's that about? Check it out. Okay, just for fun, I want to play another clip from this uh, interview. Now, you made a very a salient point, I think, about American sentiment toward our founding fathers. This was great. Watch. John Adams, you know who his son is? John Quincy Adams. And you know what he went back to Congress with? It was one thing he regretted not doing as a president was abolishing slavery. But you can't tell people just to ignore the fact that Thomas Jefferson I'm was not slavery. telling people to ignore it, to say that we're not going to listen to Thomas Jefferson or that our founding was illegitimate because they were deeply imperfect and flawed is every bit as bad as somebody who's going to say that I'm going to entirely dismiss the fact that they were slave owners. First of all, Vivek, nice looking in the black T-shirt, okay? That was that was very oh. cool to be on with him for that. But um, why, do you think <laughs> what? So, why do you think some Republicans seem to have such difficulty with the American um, past and history. They get they get very scared when they're talking about people like Thomas Jefferson. See, look, I, I'm open about the fact that Thomas Jefferson was my favorite president. He signed the Declaration of Independence, Laura, Wrote at the, the age of, of 33, while also, while also actually inventing the swivel chair. Think about that. These people were inventors. They were intellectuals. And yes, they were also our founding leaders. Were they imperfect? Of course they were, in the same way that you and I and every American and every person today is too. And the very people who are decrying our founding fathers for being the slaveholders, following the written lines you're supposed to recite, Republicans and Democrats alike, they're the very people who would have been the slaveholders 250 years ago. And so our founding fathers, they were not the conformists. They were the pioneers. They were the explorers. And what I want to revive is that founding spirit, not by claiming that they were perfect, but by recognizing their imperfections, they were still committed to the pursuit of a more perfect union. And that's what we are as a country. We're not perfect, but we're founded on the pursuit of a more perfect union. That is what makes America great. And I think that's what Republicans need to be stop by being so shy about and start actually celebrating and wearing on our sleeve. If you ever get a chance to um, debate or talk to like Kamala Harris, and Biden's not going to be debating, I don't think anyone, but it'd be good just to say, why shouldn't George Washington be banned. If you're going to take all these other names off, all these statues down, why why should Washington still be around as any figure we revere, given his slaveholding yeah, well, past? I'll file that away, Laura, and I'm looking forward to hearing Kamala's answer. I don't expect it to be super coherent, but I'll be sure to face off with her on it. All right, but she'll repeat the same phrase over and over again. All right, yeah. Vivek, great to see you. Yeah. I'll be sure to face off with Kamala on it. Now, it's for somebody like Vivek who chooses his words very carefully and obviously is quite good at arguing and doesn't uh, often uh, miss a step. Uh, whip smart, interesting phraseology there. I look forward to facing off with Kamala Harris on this issue. Well, this is what Vivek is saying. This is what he said uh, in the aftermath of Donald Trump congratulating Vivek and then calling him perfect. Donald Trump, it's perfect Vivek. Vivek is perfect. It's not my words, it's Trump's the words. The country is at stake and we need to focus on all of our resources. We have to put them into energy and effort and defeating Biden. And A little note to Nikki. She's not going to win. She's not going to win. But if she did... She would be under investigation by those people in 15 minutes. And I could tell you five reasons why already. Not big reasons, a little stuff that she doesn't want to talk about, but she will be under investigation within minutes. And so would Ron have been, but he decided to get out. He decided to get out. Now Vivek, I don't think would be at all because he's perfect, right? <laughs> And Tim Scott, I know, would never. That's no chance. I mean, listen, speaking of somebody who chooses his words in a very uh, authoritative manner, Donald Trump calls Vivek a dynamo on state. A dynamo? Dynamo? Ha! What an awesome word from a bygone era. And then calls him perfect. So, what? Like, it's not my fault for just noticing. 
Donald Trump is speaking very, very kindly of Vivek. Donald Trump is saying that he's chosen his vice president already. This was Donald Trump before the Iowa caucuses. Who would be in the running for a vice president? Well, I can't tell you that, really. I mean, I know who it's going to you be. Give us a hint. I'll give you, we'll do another show sometime. Well, what about any of the people who you've run against? Would you be open to mending fences with oh, any sure, of them? Oh, sure, I will, I will. I've already started like Christy better. Uh, <laughs> So this is Donald Trump making a joke about Chris Christie who dropped out that day, and then saying that, of, of course, in the running would be people who ran against him for president. Now, Donald Trump, uh, effectively in a r more recent interview with the same anchor, Brett Baer, says that there's a 25% chance that the guy who he's already picked to be vice president will make it. What does that mean? There's a 25% chance. Well, it means they're, it's a wide open race. It means that this reporting is correct, that there's an outright auditionings happening and you're witnessing The Apprentice in real time. This is the real apprentice, right? Donald Trump saying, you know, a lot of things can change and it's gonna take a couple months for me to figure this out. And what I know about Trump, obviously working pr you know, pr pretty closely with his team, knowing a lot of his team, speaking with them, getting to do interviews and traveling with the campaign here and there, is that Trump is a guy who makes decisions based on energy of the moment and based on the moods of the moment. And that is why these situations where you see Donald Trump and Vivek sort of like in, in public together, right? And Trump's like jockeying back and forth and making jokes and like reading the audience. Watch, watch this, just without audio. This is Donald Trump saying Vivek's perfect. And then look at him. He's like surveying the audience and reading the energy there. He's doing the exact, he's doing the exact same thing uh, right here. Trump surveying the audience looking around and like listening to the listening to the energy it's a guy it's why i it's why i really really like him because he feel he feels that energy and then he move he he moves based on where that energy is so what does it mean with vivek ranswami saying that he's going to look forward to his debates with kamala harris he's going to look forward to his arguments with kamala harris what does that mean has something already been set in motion? I would expect no, uh, from, based on what I know, ba based on all my sources, no decision has been made right now. Tucker Carlson very much in the running. A lot of people very much in the running. Sarah Sanders, a lot of people are starting to percolate her name. Nikki Haley, I think not in the running, and that's important. Um, but one final little bit here on this is Glenn Beck sort of perfectly crystallizing Glenn Beck has become quite an ally of Donald Trump and an, uh, like a um, very unofficial advisor, Donald, uh, Glenn Beck saying, yo, listen, like this is what's crazy about this is that you're going to need somebody with Vivek's energy to carry forth the mantle. And more importantly, Donald Trump's reaction is everyone keeps telling me to go with Vivek. <laughs> this is, this is Glenn Beck saying, according to Donald Trump, everyone, that's the quote is telling him that he has to choose Vivek. Well, here's some inside information. He, Donald Trump called me and he said, uh, any advice on who I should pick for vice president? Oh, really? Who, wow. who do you think? Not that he, I mean, he's probably calling everyone. But that's great that you're on that yeah, list. And so he said, who do you think? And I said, I don't know how you're going to feel about it, but this is the day, I think it was the day he trashed Vivek. And I uh -huh. said, Vivek. Um, and he said, why do you say that? He said, that's the number one response from everybody I've asked wow. that question. And I, he said, why do you say that? And I said, A, he can defend you. He's right in your pocket. And while you're defending this, he's watching your back defending this. I said, also, um, I think he's, his, some of his ideas are really, really good. Yeah. He connects with the youth, which now the latest uh, of 18 to 24-year-olds that voted for Biden, they're not voting for Biden, mm -hmm. but they won't vote for Donald Trump yet. So you get that lower vote, the people that are excited about, hey, f something fresh and yeah. different, and then... In 2028, when you can no longer run, you continue for another eight years right. uh -huh. and you get the credit for bringing this new fresh face in. I said, I, I, I just think you become legendary. And what did he say to that? Well, we'll <laughs> see.
<laughs> I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see. I'm going to do my best. I mean, honestly, I, you know, I was going, I was going super hard in the paint before I was going super hard in the paint for Tucker. Had dinner. I mean, we had dinner with Tucker and I asked him directly about it. I, you know, we asked him directly about it live on live on the program when we were doing the spaces on X. I said, what you going to do? And Tucker doesn't say no. And I know for a fact that Tucker's being asked. But now, now, I guess we'll see. The Apprentice in real time. But like literally the Apprentice in real time. Because Donald Trump's going to hand the administration off to this person. And I have no doubt that it'll be the most successful administration in American history. There's a lot of good things, a lot of good energy coming together. What do you think? Let me know. It's your boy Benny. Like, share, and subscribe. And stay incredibly, indubitably based. Oh,